Hi everyone, Kenny Sheritz here with part three of my ongoing series on how to tune the floor tom. I'm using my Questlove Breakbeats little floor tom here I got to challenge gets a little 13 inch floor tom man. But we're gonna, today we're going to use stereo tuning and show you how you can easily get the maximum low tone out of it. And then we're also going to talk about some intervals, so how to change the actual texture of the tone that's coming at you. Because when we're talking to floor tom, for me, I look at the top head as something called pitch the tone I want the drum to be at, the pitch I choose for the drum to be tuned to. And then the tone of the drum, the actual reaction the drum has towards the microphone, is the bottom head, which I tune in three different intervals. Tonic to tonic, minor third, and a perfect fourth. And when I minor third and perfect fourth, I mean above, to where this is tonic, and this is a minor third, or a perfect fourth above. Those two are actually my favorite tuning intervals on the planet. Uh, I live by them because microphones love them. So let's get to this and talk about this. Now this drum's been where I left it since I went out on tour. I know it's a little bit tuned high, but let's give it a check and see, first of all, <laughs> still sounds good, still sounds solid. This drum's been sitting here since I went out on tour a week and a half ago, cold, hot, going through the house, who knows what's going on. But the point is, this drum's exactly where I left it because I stretched it properly using the tenants of stereo tuning. Now, the thing for me is with this 13 inch floor tom, I still want to get as much bottom end as I can get out of it because I want some uh, so uh, down there when I'm playing floor tom. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking two keys. Got my lovely Evans keys here, man. I'm going to take this Evans 360 G2 head and get to tuning on it. Now, if you want to come in a little bit closer here and check this out from a top view, I want to make sure everyone understands what I'm saying about stereo tuning. It's about using two keys in unison to follow your standard radial tuning patterns to help the drum go up and down as one solid unit, as if almost you're tuning a guitar. Now, in this situation, I want to run and gun and see if I can get this drum head to the lowest possible tension. So I'm going to go down a little bit in unison, like two birds flocking together. But I'm also, since we're going down, I'm going to go up just a little bit. Because I believe that if you don't and you find that perfect tuning, you'll forget to tweak it back up a little and then that lug will start backing out. But if you got it moving forward, just like a screw in the wall or a guitar tuning, you want it going forward, that way it doesn't back out. Now I'm going to take these two keys, and even though they're a little bit off balance from each other, i got to visually and mentally remember just about how much I turned. Now here I didn't do a full big turn. I did a little between an eighth and a quarter, and then I went back up. We go back over here, eighth and a quarter, back up. Somewhere in between those two. Let's see where this head settled at. Now the first thing to look for is, is flat or, you know, basically loose, um, loose head right here where you see the wrinkles coming in. And I can see some, which means we're getting low. So I'm going to take this one key, bounce her up, and take my moon gel, put it right in the middle. And I notice that these two actually are both a little low, so I'm going to give them a tweak together because stereo tuning means you want to keep them balanced, and you'd be surprised and go, ah, oh, this one, I can really feel it, even if it's just just a wee hair of a turn, you can feel the difference. Check it again. And it sounds to me like we got a solid tone. Now I'm going to look at this one more time all the way around, give it a little bit of a push, make sure I don't see any more wrinkles. This one is actually a little bit high, so I'm going to back her down and then put her back up a little bit. And that showed me that this one's still just a little bit low. Now with stereo tuning and just a little bit of tweaking here and there, I was able to take this head down about two steps with just one round of turns. And that's my whole point, going from super tight all the way down to the pitch you want. It gives you a chance to move quickly, and quickly is really what you want sometimes when you're tuning times. So you don't have time, you pull it out of a hot car, oh my god, it's a little out of balance, what am I going to do? Double check it, bro. You'll know pretty quickly using stereo tuning. It'll help you balance that head quickly and get on with the gig, and not spending time tuning the drums. So let's see what this is now in terms of pitch. Wow, that's really low. But it's a little wangy. Well, that's because this top head is tuned to an interval that was relative to the last tuning of the pitch of the top head. Um, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. That's a la. That's about a six. Somewhere in that range between a fifth and a seventh is six. That's way too high for a drum, man. So we're going to flip this drum over. And again, grab my moon gel, put it right in the middle. Grab my mallet, double check on the thin head. Just 
So the scary tune a lot of times it might just be that one lug, but I swear to God, sometimes this one will be affected by it. It'll sound like it's high, but you want it to go a little bit more. So I'm gonna move them just together with this one over here moving a lot, and this one moving a little. Let's check it again. Now you see with the mallet, you can hear that high ring come out and get a good tone coming out of it. So now that we've got that balanced and that bottom head set, let's go ahead and do it one more time. Now I like to flank my keys if I can. It's good for your eyes, it's good for your hands, it makes you think. But I want to go down. We're going a long way quickly, so we're going to come down with that one. One full half turn. That's one set around. You can already feel it get really loose. The uh, little goes a long way on these Ludwig Questlove break beats. Hits. And then back up. Now I'm going to push on this thing and see that's how much one round of turns got me all the way down to wrinkle. So I'm going to push. One of the tools I use is I realize that, hey man, these are the only two lugs that have wrinkle on them. So I'm going to tweak up, tweak up. I'm going to take a look before I go back up and double check my tones. it up and say this is a pretty good low starting point so let's find the interval that these two are at um wow just by luck they're tuned evenly so let's check it out what an even tuning gives you is a nice rich attack but a full body tone not as much definition as you want You hear the ring, you hear the tone, but if you're doing fast, 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 fast figures, even tuning is not always the best. It's great for ballads, big open toms, country, man, where you're doing a little funk. It's not a, a fast thing. It's an old school thing where the thump of the tom really matters. Man, it's great tuning. Now we're going to go ahead and take this one up. And I'm going to take this bottom head up just a little because it's still a little bit low for my taste. Just a touch and feel. Then I'm going to go this bottom head up to a minor third. Do. Do re mi. So since I know that coming down a full half turn got me like a long way, I'm just going to go up a little bit here and see what this drum gives me. Again, this is one of the first times I'm putting this kit together, so you're seeing me do this the first time, man. Woo! Uh, not quite. Do. Get our dough again. As long as I got my pinches, as long as I got my details. Do, do, re, mi. And we have a minor third. Now it was really easy to move to the intervals using stereo tuning because you're just like tuning the guitar. You're like, oh, it ain't quite there, man. Just move it up a little. And you move it intervals. So let's check it out. Ah, just what I was looking for. Come in a little closer with that. Get this tone coming at you. You hear that natural bam? Instead of having to detune lugs to get that drop that a lot of people do, you get it naturally. And I do mean naturally. So when you're looking at the minor third, this is great for just about any application. Good for rock, good, great for jazz, and pretty darn good for country. It's got a little bit more attack and a little less sustain than even tuning, but it gives you a certain drop that really makes your fills have a nice end. I'll also use this technique. Uh, if I have an 18 inch floor tom that can't tune too much lower than it's wanting to and I need it to go lower, I'll soften up that pitch, go as low as I can and use a minor third instead of a fourth in an arena uh, to get that warmer sound, more pillowy. Same with a great way to start an 8 inch tom. 8 inch toms have a tendency to sound like bongos no matter how hard you try. 
But by using that minor third interval and keeping that top head low, you get this nice drop that is a great soft start to how the toms go through the fill. So when you go from an eight to 10, it's really supple. Now we're gonna flip this one more time. We're gonna go for what I call my bread and butter tuning, which is a perfect fourth. And I'm gonna give it a listen before I go. Uh, uh, the eyes of Texas, where I'm at, I'm back home in Texas. Um. Stereo tuning, one shot, a little bit of singing, a little paying attention, a little bounce in your hands, we get a perfect four. Now that's a drum with a tap. You should notice in the sound of the recording that that's really jumping out at you now. This tuning is my bread and butter for arenas and for rocks, especially for my gospel chops guys. Man, they gotta have it. They're playing a lot of notes. They want you to hear the articulation, but they still want tone. This is a great way to make the jump really just jump. Make this drum bark in a way that the other tuning levels don't. Um, it still sounds great on big fills, but it kind of makes a little bit less sustain, a little bit more attack. So your engineer actually uses less gate. They can soften their gate, tail their gate out, and the drum sounds so natural, yet every note speaks. And the best part about this perfect fourth is you don't need a whole lot of EQ. You can just drop it in the mix and shape it around the places you want to, and all of a sudden, since it so, speaks so individually, well, you don't have to worry about it getting in the way of, of vocals or, or guitars or other things you want to do. So now that we've covered some of the fundamental tenets of interval tuning, uh, i.e. the tonic and tonic tuning that we looked at first, a nice broad general tuning gets a rich tone, moderate attack, tones is sustain. The minor third, which is tonic, and a minor third above, which gives you a nice jazzy drop and a warm rich tone with a touch more attack. And the perfect fourth, my bread and butter tuning for arenas and my gospel chop strummers, is tonic and a perfect fourth above. So to fine tune that, we're gonna use the tendency to stereo tuning and the things we're doing because I think you realize just how quickly that thing moved. Uh, you know, I'm yakking away here, man, but if I wasn't yakking, you'd be like, oh my God, that happened fast. So anyways, on with my yakking. Uh, I'm gonna grab a pitch pipe. So instead of singing or using those tunes, I can really, really clarify my pitches. Now let's check this top head and see where she's really at. Wow, that's pretty nicely tuned. Let's check it out. Ah, ah, ah. Now that's a C sharp. Now, as earlier in the video, you notice this is about as low as we can go on this drum, C sharp, at least on this drum. As low as I can go without getting flap or possible back out. I still want this thing to stay in tune while I'm playing it. So we're going to start it with a C sharp here, and we're going to double check my perfect fourth on the bottom. And then the perfect fourth with a C sharp in the bottom would be an F sharp. The eyes of Texas. One of the songs I like are, of course, Here Comes the Bride. I don't care what you use, but it works, okay? So I'm gonna flip this drum over and double check my intervals. Now with this and this pitch pipe handy, I can realize it might just be a hair flap. Pull off my moon gel. Oh, hey, Mr. Moon Gel. Put her on the edge, not in the middle yet. So now I'm gonna put her in the middle and double check. And I hear just a little flatness right here with just a little tweak and covering it. And I hear it over here as well. Pull this back to the side. Oh. Double check that F sharp. We've got a drum tuned to a perfect fourth that is singing, screaming, and I play this just about anywhere. Live studio, this thing is ready to go. And uh, just to point out a few things again, uh, people have asked me about the Evans Level 360 head, if it makes a difference, if the changes they've made in their design have really made a difference. And I've got to be honest, it's a tech, yeah, it's made a big difference. Uh, this was so easy to tune up, up and down. Um, no weird stretching, no out of balance type things. It just flowed like water. So uh, for those who asked me about it, don't doubt it, it's a quality product. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, that thing's screaming. 
Stick around for how to tune to Tom Tom for whom to use my little quest slip, breakbeats Tom Tom. We'll put these two together on the kit with the kick drum and the snare drum and see how it all sing together. Sunday. <laughs>